just bought tickets to ride this one. The good old PCC. The last one to ride that I ran in Baltimore. Yeah, he'll give you another trip for, for, for another trip on the other car. Mm. Hey. Okay, let me get right in here. Two? No, it's still up. Thank you. Looking for the food. Oh, that's gone. Remember this? Oh, uh, they they took it. Oh, it Step to the rear of the streetcar. These old streetcars even had curtains. Wanna get some sleep before we get to work? Remember that? designs that the automobiles had at the time 
the opening of the windows. He used the Chevrolet cranks, as we like to call them down here, uh, to open and close the windows. Also, notice the operator also has a comfortable seat to sit in, and he has foot pedals to operate the streetcar, which left his hands free to use his dashboard with all the switches, and also to give tokens and transfers and uh, collect, collect fares. Of course, it was a one-man car, which meant, you know, uh, he had to do everything. He collected the fares, he did uh, the transfers, and he operated the streetcar. But he had to count up these fares at the end of the day. And I'll tell you, on a rush hour on New York Road Line, the number eight line, I wouldn't want to been that operator collecting those fares and having to count them at the end of the day. Anyway, uh, these particular cars lasted in service all the way to the end of streetcar, the temporary, quote, end of streetcar service in Baltimore, which was November the 3rd, 1963. This car became the very last car to operate on the streets of Baltimore in November the 3rd, 1963. Of course, in 1992, there was a big turnaround when the light rail line opened up, going from Timonium to Glen Burnie, and it runs in the middle of Howard Street downtown, so that makes it a streetcar. So basically, Baltimore does have streetcars again. Okay, does anybody have any questions? You, I know you got one. <laughs> Go ahead. What's that thing that you have on your head? What? Here? Oh, the pedal, that's the accelerator. You ever watch Daddy when he drives the car and he steps on the gas pedal? Well, basically, that's what that is. You step on that pedal and it makes the car go. But it's electricity that runs this car, not gasoline. That's how they throw streetcar switches.
This is what they gave us. I don't know if you can take a second trip, though. Next car out. An old wooden one. Let's see going. Yeah. Yeah, this one's all wood. Yeah. This is 1920. Nice woodwork. No, that's what I was just uh, wondering. Where in the world he is?
Williams Oilers. stood out there for 8, 10, 12 hour days uh, for uh, six days a week to earn a living. That's the way it was at the turn of the century. The day isn't that bad, but can you imagine uh, sleep, snow, and so forth? That's right. Uh, now his only job is to operate the streetcar, and he only does it on command. He can stop the car, but he can't move it without the conductor giving him a signal, and that's what the bells are all about. Two bells means uh, it's uh, okay to go ahead. One bell means somebody wants to get off, stop at the next stop. So it must have been a noisy city at the time. Bells, ding, 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 ding. Uh, this car was built in 1898. It's almost 100 years old. And we're currently refurbishing the seats of the original seats. And they definitely have to be replaced. They're a mess. Uh, we're working on the woodwork. Notice uh, mm -hmm. it's not, not a lot of light here, but uh, this is the original finish. This is the part that we were able to get around to. You can see it down at the other end as well. Oh, yeah. And the uh, light bulbs are period light bulbs also. We're not sure about the date on the light bulbs, but we know that that particular brand was not made after 1910. It's a good job. Well, you see, they put out very little light, and as such, they, they just burn forever. Uh, usually it's accidents where they get broken, and determines how long they stay in the socket or not. But we have a supply of them, and we don't mind burning them at all. We haven't burned out any of them, to my knowledge. And they've been in this car for years. And uh, that's about all I have to say. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Hold on to. Uh, that's where the strap hangers are called, the people who stand up, standees. That's why the seats are longitudinal instead of crossways. You can get more people in the streetcar that way. Uh, this floor is ripped, and the reason for that is to drain off snow and water uh, from people's boots in the wintertime. It also would uh, pile up in here. And, uh, these little doors. The kids always ask, what's down there? What's the doors for? <laughs> well, that's where the electric motors are. And if they have to do any servicing, oh, okay. just lift up the door. And the motor's under my feet. And over here on the side is the uh, reduction gears. It's like an automobile and it has a motor. Well, cars don't have motors. They have engines. <laughs> but they do have a gearbox, and that's what that uh, round object is. We tell the kids that's the basement. Yeah, looks like the basement. <laughs> this car was uh, never never went around loops when it was in operation. They didn't have loops back in those days. They had uh, tracks that came to a dead end. So to demonstrate that, I'm going to change my controller from this end to that end. We're going to go back the same track that came up. It's convenient too. Uh huh. Did you mention this is 1898, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's an oldie, but a I have these cars. I would have thought if they weren't sold for scrap during the First World War, they certainly would have sold for scrap during the Second World War. Mm -hmm. But they all survived sitting in the back of uh, car barns all over the years. It's pretty incredible when you stop to think about it. Mm -hmm. <coughs> uh, I'm ready to head on back. I don't have any questions. You can imagine what it was to operate one of these cars, you know, for a living in this kind of weather, out on the front platform. There's no windshield to protect you. You just got the wind and everything else in your face. If it starts to rain or snow, you're stuck out there because the car is going to continue to <laughs> go over its lines of passengers. Kind of like those horses. <laughs>
been starting about upsetting the horses, so I don't think I better move up any closer. <laughs> All right. Uh, I don't want a stampede here. <laughs> Nice ride. Thank you. Is this the only car you've been on so far? Mm -hmm. Probably the past 15 years I've been on all of them at one time or another. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've been here for probably have the 6119. Maybe that 20 years, actually. Right, great. <laughs> oh, to join, I guess. Yeah, why don't you? <laughs> Something on the CSX again. But it's out of sight over the bridge. Streetcars at night can be very photogenic. Keep the focus, that is. Streetcars at night also make for very good video. Memories. There's that train. Lots of action in the Falls Road Valley.